All right, thanks. Uh, good introduction. You got half my presentation. So, um, <laughs> so overarching, I want to talk a little bit about kind of our business strategy for this business and our businesses in general, as well as talk about what we're doing here. Because um, I think that our strategy is, is a bit different from many others. Uh, part of it has to do with it. we're more of a business to business type of thing rather than business to consumer. So, you know, social website, we are not. Uh, we try to build products that you charge a lot of money for. Um, so there's a few aspects of that I try to kind of highlight. Um, that we try to build platforms, not just products. Product typically has a single use, employ it, sell it to a single market. We try to look at things as platforms. We've always done that. So it's something that you can build on. You have multiple instantiations of that platform to create multiple products in multiple markets, multiple segments. The other thing we always do, and maybe that's just because I'm a student that are stubborn, but we always pick the harder path to go down. We never do the easy thing. It seems like the easy thing you know how to do is boring. That if we know how to do it, we tend not to want to. We want to do the things, try the things we don't know how to do, and figure out how to do it, and that's a nice journey to go on. But it's also one where a lot of startups don't take that path because they don't have the patience or the funding or the fortitude to give that a try. They're looking for creating an MVP, doing something that, that has the quickest path to market. Uh, we tend to go the other direction. The other thing, and this is maybe the most important one, is learning the ecosystem. It's not just doing basic market research, say, okay, are there customers that want this for the competition? It's really learning the entire ecosystem. That, that it's not just product and a customer, or product and a user. It's you have sales channels, you have support mechanisms, you have distribution uh, strategies. You've got uh, partners in there. You've got not only the customer, but you have the user of the product. Um, you've got the, the other folks that are involved in it. There's a whole ecosystem with any product that you might develop, especially if you think about it as a platform. You dig into the ecosystem, you can learn a lot more about where you need to be for your product. Um, solving the big problem. As you explore that ecosystem, at least in our experience, we found, wait a minute, the idea we had really isn't the best thing to tackle. There are bigger problems that we can solve, which means bigger opportunities. Um, and that tends to be, the bigger problem tends to be what people care about the most, because it's, it's a bigger issue. Um, and then uh, the last one, and this is the one that's always, always the hardest, and that's you actually have to sell it. Um, it's great to build something, but then you've got to actually generate revenue from it. Um, I had a friend, that somebody was talking to him and said, what's the most important thing to start up? To get to revenue. And it's very true that once you've got revenue, you, you've got a path to sustainability. Um, so you have to make sure you know how to sell your solution. There's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, and you know, we'll talk about kind of what we're gonna do with this product. So getting our product. So everybody's heard of the Xbox Connect. I don't need to talk about it. Um, uh, but when it came out, uh, everybody started to go, oh, hey, you can do all these things with it. You can do things with sports and rehab and this and that and games and VR and, and augmented reality and so much stuff. And everybody started doing it. And people started developing software around it. Microsoft said, hey, wait a minute. We need to get on this bandwagon. We're going to release the SDK for this so that people can do things like track people's movements and uh, get their gestures and things so that people can build onto that. And so lots and lots of people have built things on, onto that. We took the harder path. We said, wait a minute, if everybody's going to have access to this SDK that easily lets you track people, then how are we going to find you know, a product of value? How are we going to solve the bigger problem? That's, what's the harder path? The harder path was, let's use this technology to do things that other people can't do. Let's use it to track things that people can't track with the existing software. Let's write our own SDK. Let's write our own software that can leverage this data and track people and objects and things and, and do things. Um, that would led to a lead form that Danny, Danny talked about. Um, we had a team here that said, hey, wait a minute, you can track people's movements here, we can track other things, we could use this in weightlifting. Um, so what we ultimately track in weightlifting is the movement of the bar and the athlete, something that we can't use any SDK to do that. The things don't work and understand a person with a bar on them. All they understand is a general person, much like most of them, the SDKs don't understand the person with one arm. Well, where's your arm? Something's wrong, you're not human. Um, so we built that product, we built core technology, we hired people that are really smart, um, that, that understand this stuff. And so we kind of have the culmination of two things. We have these cheap cameras. And one point about these cameras is that 
They're depth sensing cameras, so they build this depth map. That's, that wasn't new at the time. There were already cameras that could do that, there was already technology for that, but it was expensive and didn't work really good. The real breakthrough came, the Israeli company called PrimeSense developed a low cost, comparatively low cost chip that could do this, and then Microsoft licensed that chip uh, to put in the, into the Kinect, and other companies licensed it as well. And so it was, it was really an a, a innovative solution um, so we have lots of smart people that work on that. Go ahead. So I, I'll get into this later. The questions, uh, I hope you asked about this, but we spent over a year doing market research. Tons of surveys, talking to, to, to hundreds of people to gather information that, that, about our product. Go ahead, next slide. And that led, part, part way through that led to building the prototype Danny alluded to, uh, alluded to uh, use of Madonna to do self-directed rehab. Basically, the patient can come in, see the screen, and do their movements, and tracks their movements. Go ahead, next slide. So what we found out, though, really, is this is the real problem. This is the big problem. That, that every minute, two people fall and get hurt in hospitals. Next slide. Nobody sees it. This is the big problem. Next slide. The existing solutions are interesting. They put yellow socks on people so you know they're at fall risk. They have people sit in the room watching 24-7, and even when they're going to the bathroom, they strap them in. They have people watch them there. They put padded things in the floor so when they fall, they don't get hurt as bad. Those things suck. Next slide. Okay, that's, that comes to our solution. We have something that's a little bit special. We don't have a regular Kinect camera. We have the new Kinect camera. Um, so we have, we have something that's way better than what other people have right now. We tie that with a computer. We tie that with some really smart software that you can ask questions about. Um, and, and see if I can answer them. And we'll give people as a virtual nurse that's in the room, it's watching what they're doing, it's observing what they're doing, and it's for one key reason. All those other solutions don't prevent falls. They basically alert you when a fall happens. Why do people buy those solutions? It's to prevent bigger lawsuits. They say, well, we did what we could. We bought all the products in the market, so you can't sue us for as much money. No products actually alert people before they get out of bed. Well, how could you? It's like a blind person sitting there going, okay, I'm going to detect if out of bed. This is a camera, this can see things, the software can, can sense things. We know when people get out of bed. The most important thing out of all the stuff that we're doing, we aren't going to sell this directly. We're not going to build up a sales team of hundreds of people and sell uh, across the country in the healthcare system and a startup that we're going to buy. We're going to partner with other companies that already sell into the hospital rooms. They already have products that are already there. They know who the people are, how to talk to them, what they'll buy. We're going to build the product. We're going to partner there. We won't give away half the revenue that way, but guarantee you, in the first month, we'll have 100 times as many sales we can have otherwise. This is something to think about in any companies you're involved in. You don't have to be the one selling to the customer to have a real company. Think about Johnson & Johnson. They don't sell to, to you. They sell through a series of distri distribution uh, channel. That's what, that's what we're going to do. And so that pretty much is uh, my six minutes. Um, real quick overview. Um, hopefully there's lots of questions.